Hi, this is Monica Louie from OurDebtFreeFamily.com and today I am so honored to be joined by Lauren Grootman from LaurenGrootman.com, formerly I am that lady.com. and she's also the author of the brand new book, The Recovering Spender, How to Live a Happy, Fulfilled, Debt-Free Life. Lauren is a wife, mom of four, and a recovering spender who, with her husband Mark, figured out how to get out of $40,000 of debt. She's a frequent guest as a frugal living expert on the Today Show, Good Morning America, Nightline, The Dr. Oz Show, Rachel Ray, and more. As you'll find out in the interview, she and her husband hit rock bottom in their finances when they found themselves underwater in their mortgage, $42,000 in debt, and running a $1,000 deficit in their budget each month. And Lauren's brand new book, The Recovering Spender, How to Live a Happy, Fulfilled, Debt-Free Life is now available online and in bookstores wherever books are sold. Today, Lauren shares how she and her husband dug themselves out of $42,000 of debt in four years. What she did to cut her family's grocery spending from $1,000 each month to just $200. Amazing. Lauren also shares about her brand new book, The Recovering Spender, and tells us who will benefit from reading it and what to do if you're a saver married to a spender. I love this interview with Lauren. She has such a great story of how she turned her life around from being a compulsive shopper to getting out of debt and now helping millions of others do the same. So here is the interview with Lauren Grootman from laurengrootman.com. All right, Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today. I am thrilled to have you here. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to be here as well. Well, I want to talk to you about two different things in this interview. First, I want to talk about your debt-free journey because I love sharing debt success stories with my audience and to inspire them that it is really possible to get out of debt uh, no matter your situation. And I know that you share the same message. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm excited to dig into your story and inspire people today. But then I also want to switch gears and talk about your brand new book, which I love, The Recovering Spender. I am so excited for this book to come out and be shared with the world. And I thank you for sending me an advanced copy. uh, You're welcome. Read it ahead of time. Um, But I know that it is a wonderful book and an important message. So we'll definitely get into that. Um, And the title for everyone out there is The Recovering Spender, How to Live a Happy, Fulfilled, Debt-Free Life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And I know that in the beginning of the book, you share your story. But for those of us or those out there who don't know you yet and don't know your story, you and your husband, Mark, found yourselves deep in debt, as so many of us do. So I want to start there. So how did you get into debt? What kind of debt was it? And how much debt did you have? Yeah. So, um, we got married young. So we were 21 when we got married and we were still in college. We didn't really have a ton of, you know, life, I guess, under our belt. And, um, so right off the bat, we were in debt. I brought debt into the marriage. Not a, not a lot, um, maybe a thousand dollars, something like that. Um, I had been in debt three times before getting married, but my grandpa would always pay it off for me. Lucky me. Right. Um, so you would say luck, but with how it made it, it didn't, make me feel the sting of my consequences, you know, going through college. And so when we were newly married, um, I just started spending money and not, not in the fact of spending money, you know, on a thousand dollars at Saks or whatever. It was more just like going to Target and coming, you know, going in for milk and coming home with like a whole new room full of furniture. Um, or, you know, going and making impulse purchases on things that I didn't need and, and not watching how much I spent on food and spending ridiculous amounts of food at the grocery store and eating out. And so the debt got up to $40,000. Uh, the majority of that was credit cards. And, um, it was because of my overspending. I 
and it, it was a gradual process. It didn't happen overnight. So it was pretty much five years of me not knowing where our money was going, never having a budget, putting things on credit cards, promising myself to pay them off. And after doing that for four years, I found myself in just such a huge, huge mess. Um, and that, and I, I had hid most of it from Mark, which was, which was a hard thing because I, in my sense, I was being the good wife, like trying to take care of the money. And I didn't want to stress him out by telling him how much debt I had gotten us into. So I kind of kept it secret from him and I would spend money and I would hide it from him. The things that I bought from him because I didn't want him to get stressed out and I didn't want an argument. And so that made the debt worse. And, um, so yeah, about, it was around 40, it was more than 40,000. It was maybe 42,000, I believe, um, is what the actual number was. So, so that's how it all kind of got started. Wow. So, um, and then hiding things from Mark. So that was probably causing stress on you trying mm -hmm. to avoid, um, yep. causing stress for him. Yeah, definitely. But then I would feel like a sting of regret, you know, like, oh, why am I doing this? I love my husband. I love, like, we have a great marriage. Why am I hiding this from him? Um, and I would always tell myself, oh, I'll just tell him tomorrow. And then tomorrow would come and I would, wouldn't say anything. And, you know, it, it got out of control. It'd be easier to go one more day without saying something. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And unfortunately, that's what happened. And, uh, you know, I think any marriage can kind of deal with that. For me, you know, we have a great marriage. And, um, and it was hard for me to come clean to him, which I finally did. Uh, but it made our marriage stronger, but we had to really learn how to work together to make it that way. Yeah. So um, my favorite quote from the book is, I'll just read it real fast. When the pain of staying in debt is greater than the pain of changing your spending habits, then you will make the changes needed to get out of debt. So mm -hmm. what was that point for you? When did the pain of staying in debt become greater than the pain of getting out and coming clean? Yeah. So for me, it was, um, a few different things that happened. Um, the biggest thing was that one day when I went out shopping and, and put the clothes in the trunk of my car. And then when he went to work the next day, um, I got them out of the trunk of the car and hung them up in my closet and took the tags off. And I felt really, really bad about that. That was like one of the, that was like the first time that I had done that. And I felt really, really guilty about it. But I think the big thing was that, you know, we were pregnant. We were, um, we had, we weren't pregnant with our second child yet, but we had, um, we had more, we wanted to have more kids. And when my son was about 18 months, we got pregnant and then we miscarried right away. Uh, about, well, a few weeks later when I was about seven weeks pregnant, I had a miscarriage and then, um, that turned my world like upside down and then fast forward a year and a half and I still couldn't get pregnant and I was still trying to figure out why I couldn't get pregnant. And it just brought me to like a complete breaking point in my life where I was like, I'm in $40,000 of the debt. A lot of times I would shop to deal with the depression of not being able to have another kid. Now we since have had three more kids since then, but, um, so that was really depressing for me. So I would shop to kind of make myself feel better and I'd be bored. I only had one kid. So we would go to the mall and buy whatever we wanted. And, um, so it all kind of came crumbling down around me where I had the miscarriage. I couldn't get pregnant. We were in so much debt. I had to go, um, and work outside of the house to be able to afford our, the lifestyle that we wanted. I say lifestyle in quotes, cause it's like, you know, we were trying to live that American dream and keep up with the Joneses lifestyle, but it was, it was breaking us like our marriage. It was breaking our finances. And, um, so it was really important for me to like, just come clean about everything. And, um, the pain of the stress of being in debt and that much debt and not being able to pay our bills keeping it from Mark, it just got too unbearable where the, it was like, if I tell him and, and, and nothing changes, like that will be horrible for me. So I felt like it was the only option at that time that I needed to come clean. And the pain of changing suddenly became less than what it would be like to stay in the same exact spot. Right. And so you came clean to Mark and then you guys decided together that you're going to dig your way out of debt. Mm -hmm. So then how long from that point on did it take you to pay it all off? Yeah. So it took us uh, two years to pay around two years to pay it on the credit card debt. 
um, which was over 30,000. And then um, it took us an additional two years to pay down um, our all of our cars and student loans. So four years total um, to pay down the 42,000. Very nice. Wow. Mm -hmm. Great job. Thank and you. So what was your strategy for paying off debt? Um, what did you guys do for work? And during that time, and did you boost your income, cut your spending? Mm -hmm. um, what was your strategy for, for paying it off quickly? Yeah, so Mark is um, an actuary. So he loves numbers and, you know, spreadsheets and all that stuff that I hate. <laughs> I really don't like spreadsheets. Um, I seem to break every one that he gives me to use. I break it like within five minutes. I'm like, I don't know what I did, but everything changed. So anyway, <laughs> fun fact about us. Um, so, um, anyway, we, we, yeah, we decided, you know what, we have to make an income change. So I like went out that night, you know, the next day, I think it was after I told him about our debt, I went out and got a job at a steakhouse, which was an expensive steakhouse. So I knew I would make good money and tips. And I worked there like five, sometimes six nights a week for about a year and a half. Um, I, we needed to make more income because at that time we were running a thousand dollar deficit every month. So we weren't even making enough to cover our debt payments and all of our living expenses. Um, and so I had to go to work. So I went and did that. And um, then we decided to make things even a little bit more crazy. And we sold our huge custom house that we had built for us, which was 3,200 square feet. And we moved back to New York. At that time we were living in Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, we moved back to New York and we rented like an 800 square foot townhouse. And at that time we had another baby and um, we had all of our possessions. We either sold them or kept them in our garage because we just didn't have any room like at all to, to store anything in the house because um, it was so small. Um, but at that time we were able to make like ridiculously good progress on our debt because we decreased our living expenses by around like $900 a month, maybe $1,000 a month. And so that $1,000 we decreased our living, plus like all the other things we had learned to do about cutting our grocery bill and never having cable, all of those things that we decided to get rid of, um, we started just really kind of hammering down on the debt. So lots of big changes and sacrifices. Selling, Definitely. Selling your big gorgeous home and downsizing to 800 square feet and adding another baby to the mix. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I know you blog about on your blog, laurengroupman.com, you blog about, about cutting the spending and, um, ways to save money on the grocery bill. So in your book, I saw that, um, you said you cut your grocery shopping from $1,000 a month to $200 a month. So your goal was $50 a week on groceries. Mm -hmm. So that is amazing. And so <laughs> do you have some quick tips that you can share with us on how you did that? Yeah. So, um, first of all, I, I would have rather not only spent $50. I would, I $50. That was like what we had. Like when we looked at the line by line budget, we only had $50 a week to feed our family. So I had to make it work. So I really learned, um, how to strategically coupon. So I would coupon and get free stuff like for all of our toiletries. Like we never pay, I mean, we never paid for like toothbrushes or toothpaste or shampoo or conditioner or makeup or anything like that for like years. We just would get it for free all the time using um, like drugstore, like stopping at CVS and Rite Aid and Walgreens and learning how to play the drugstore game with that. Um, so I did that and I also learned how to strategically coupon. So I would stock up on things like we lived by a grocery store called Harris Teeter. Um, and they do triple coupon sales like once a quarter. And so I would save up and I would spend like 10, 12, 20 hours getting ready for this triple coupon sale so that I could go and shop for all of our staples that we would need for like the next three months and get them for free. So like rice, um, any kind of canned things, you know, ketchup, uh, salad dressings, all of those things that had long shelf lives. I would shop and wait for those at triple coupon sales so I could get them for free. So that way when I was shopping, you know, at the store every week, when I was only had the $50, it was like I was getting meat and produce because everything else that I had was already set aside and I had gotten, and it was in my pantry. So I really had to like learn how to strategically grocery shop and plan things, you know, around sale items to get them for, you know, really cheap. Wow. 
So <laughs> lots of lots of planning. So that's I mean that kind of became your full time job to be looking for these um, cost cutting methods mm-hmm. and planning so that you could stick within that budget. Right. Yeah. So I ended up actually quitting my server job uh, to come home and stay home with my son. And um, when we were looking at like because the server job was just too stressful. I was away from him way too much that I wanted to. And so I, when we started looking at our budget, it was like, okay, if we, you know, we, we paid off some debt, we got ourselves in a better situation. If you can come home and now your job is to cut that grocery bill from a thousand dollars to $200. You know, if I spend three hours a week planning and saving at the grocery store, it's an hourly wage of $33 an hour. And so I started looking at it in that sense, like how much, you know, could I make per hour? And, and, and then I was a lot less likely to like go and blow it at target on something I didn't need. Cause I had just worked so hard to save this money. I wasn't just going to go and like throw it out the window. So it made me really think about my other spending that was going on as well. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, and then during this time you also started your blog. So it was called, I am that lady. And now you changed to Lauren mm-hmm. and so, and it's an extremely, if you haven't heard of it, I'd be surprised because it's extremely <laughs> popular, millions and millions of readers every month, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, so you started that and it took off because so many other people during that time were going through the same struggles of, you know, with the economy, you know, in the recession. And, and so everybody is looking for these tips and advice. And so I've been getting the question from a lot of my readers of, you know, is starting a blog a great, a good way to, to bring in extra money to make more money? And so since you've got such an, a huge blog, um, what advice do you have to someone thinking about starting a blog to bring in extra income? Yeah, I think that blogging is amazing. Like that, you know, now I have four children and just as a little success story, two and a half years ago, I was able to retire my husband from corporate America. So he works full time with me. He's actually sitting right over there. And then my brother-in-law, his brother works for me. And then, um, like my cousin-in-law, I want to say she's over there. They're all like sitting in their desks in front of me. And so we employ two full-time people. Mark and I do this full time. And it all started from a dream that I wanted to make, you know, a hundred dollars a month to send my son to to private Christian school. And I thought, you know, I've heard people make money on blogs before, but I don't really know how, so I'll just figure it out. But I would say that you need to understand that it's a marathon. It's not a race that you need to start off a blog and you need to learn from people. Like I would highly recommend taking like a blogging course to learn about it. Um, if you can right off the bat so that you can kind of jump in with both feet, but people blog about everything. I actually just got back from a conference, um, the focus blogging conference this past week where I taught bloggers like how to get in on television, but, and there were like very small bloggers, they were larger bloggers, but everybody was making money and everybody loved what they were doing. So you can like literally write about anything and just figure out how to make money off of it, um, and service your readers. But I think your, your number one goal shouldn't be going in to just make money because you need to be there. Like I'm so protective over my readers. Like I don't work with that many advertisers. Um, and if I do, I have to like wholeheartedly believe in their, their program. I didn't start out that way. I wish I had. Um, but so I would definitely recommend that, that they need to be very protective over their audience from the beginning. Great. Thank you. Welcome. And so catch us up to the, to today. So you paid off the debt in Mm -hmm. four years. And so where do you and Mark stand now? You told us a little bit. So now you're working together. Mm -hmm. And so, but I thought I read somewhere that you're working on paying off your mortgage early. Is that true? We're about halfway done with it. Um, and then we took a, took a little halt and decided to, um, to reinvest, um, back into the business this year with, with a few things. Um, but yes, we're still paying that down and, uh, and you know, savings and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but yeah, we work full time together and, and the blog and the website, you know, provide for our family. We have of six, you know, so, um, so yeah, and we love it. We love, we love being together and, um, and sharing our story with others is like a real passion of ours. Mm -hmm. I I think it has to be to to have success. You've got to be passionate about sharing your message. Definitely. So, um, well, let's get into the book then the the recovering spender. So who is this for and tell everybody what this is about? 
Okay. So the recovering spender is about, um, the first part of the book is kind of my, my story of overspending and how I got us into debt, but it's more about just overspending. It's about, I think anybody can relate to it, um, to the book because it's really, um, I think it's written to a group of people that have never been written to before. Um, there's so many financial books out there that focus on the people that love finances. And there's not many finance books for people out there that they feel like they just suck at money and they just can't get it together. And everybody just keeps on telling them, we'll just spend less money. And it's just not that easy because, you know, money isn't just money. It's an integral part of our lives. And, you know, as an overspender myself, I think anybody that is in debt is an overspender because you're spending above your means. So you are an overspender. And so the whole book is about how to, you know, rein those means in or how to rein your spending in, how to make your spending a reflection of your value system and to encourage you that you have a life to live, but we need to take care of the money that we have right now. So the first half of the book is kind of my autobiography of like how I, um, or my biography about how I, um, you know, kind of got into debt, the feelings behind it. I even get really raw about like the way I was raised and how I see that and the way it affected me growing up. And then the second half of the book I made into kind of like a 12 step program. So the 12 steps to recovering spender, similar to like AA or, you know, something like that. Um, and it walks you through the 12 steps to get your life, you know, your spending under control and to get you back to that happy, fulfilled, debt free life that I know you want. And I do appreciate how vulnerable you were and, you know, <laughs> opening up to so many facets of your life and that led you to the point of being deep in debt, but then also, mm -hmm. you know, what you had to go through to change your mindset, to be able to grab hold of the idea that you could get out. And so I really, I think that's so fun. I, I just think it's so great. So I, I'm excited for everybody to be reading this book. Um, and so in the book, um, you talk a lot about, you know, your spending and how it affected your marriage um, and being a married spender, married to a saver. Um, but first, I want to know your advice for single spenders out there who mm -hmm. um, who know they have a problem, but they don't know how to get past it or what to do about it. So if you're single, what would you say to them? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And um you know, I actually have a family member of mine who's single, who is dealing with this right at this moment. And, um, in the book, I talk about that. You need to admit your spending to one person because, um, that could be your spouse or that could be your mom or it could be your best friend. But in that process, it, by admitting it, you're actually like realizing that you have a problem and that you need help, you know, to stop spending or maybe just help to get out of debt. And so I always recommend that you have some sort of accountability partner. So if you're single, I would recommend maybe meeting with a friend or finding a financial counselor or, um, or meeting with your mom or your dad, somebody, if you meet with them every month for them to help you and keep you accountable, I think it's going to help you a lot in the long run. So, um, there's a lot of financial counselors out there that you can find. Um, you can even just search, um, financial, what is the website? There's like a website. Um, I think it's AF. CEP or something like that, that, it, that there's an organization, especially for financial counselors, actually. So you can find somebody like that to help keep you accountable. And I think you'll have a, a lot better luck doing that than trying to do it on your own. Great advice. Mm -hmm. And so now talking about the married spenders, um, oftentimes I'm a spender. Okay. Uh, and so oftentimes we find ourselves married to savers, as I know you mm -hmm. are, and my husband's a saver as well. And, you know, with the whole opposites attract thing, but we both know that rather than balancing each other out, it can create friction. So right. I've got two questions regarding this. So what is your advice for married spenders who are afraid to come clean to their spouses? And then on the flip side of that, what advice do you have for savers who are married to a spender who isn't quite ready or willing to change yet? Yes, those are great questions. And this is actually probably my favorite question of the interview because I, I am married to a saver. And for years, we argued over money, but we didn't realize that it was because I was a spender and he was a saver. We, we just didn't get it. Um, so for me, um, the advice that I would give a spender to come clean to their spouse is that your spouse has skills that you do not have. And those are skills that you need in life. So Mark has 
like the most ridiculous like budget spreadsheet skills. Now, I hate spreadsheets. So when we do our budget together, he sits at the computer and I sit in front of my planner um, and we write it. So we just have to figure out how to work together. Um, Mark is also very um, analytical and he doesn't make impulsive decisions. As a spender, you need somebody like that because you need to be able to say, hey, um, should we go on vacation and spend this $10,000? And he'll probably say, well, I need to sleep on it. And that'll drive the spender crazy. Cause you're like, well, I need to know like right now, right? I need to know right now. I, cause I'm like, I have my finger on the purchase button when you haven't even thought about it. And so this, the spender needs to be able to rein the saver in, and you need to be able to give that saver person in your life, some sort of authority over your spending as hard as that is. But you need to realize like, I don't know if it's like this for you, but for me, it's like a safety net. Cause I know that I, I, if I make the stupid decisions, it's all on me. And if I asked him and used him and used his input, I would be a lot better off in the long run because he would have told me to stop spending that money. And so we sit down every month. Um, we call it the budget night. So the last Sunday of every month we sit down together as a couple and we figure out our budget for the whole entire month and we get to communicate about it that way. So that really helps us, um, for that. Okay. So now as a spender, what I would tell the spender about the saver is that your spender is brilliant and she's very creative. She thinks big. She has a lot to offer you as well because you need to loosen up a little bit. <laughs> um, but that being said, you cannot just give a spender an allowance because that makes her feel less than you need to include her in the process. So often savers just get so frustrated by the spender that they just are like, oh, I'll just do it all myself. But then that makes the spender not included in part of the process when she really needs to be, because she has a lot of great information that you're missing every single month. Like, you know, if I just had Mark do the budget every month, he would miss out that we need, you know, clothing for our kids for school that we need, um, toilet paper, you know, that we need light bulbs, like, like things that he doesn't think about, I can provide insight to. And I kind of, you know, I still do all the grocery shopping and meal planning because that's a skill of mine. I can think like that. And so you really like work really, really well together if we figure out how to work the relationship out. So if that makes sense that Mark and I do amazing together now, but it's because we got on the same page and defined our values and where we want to go in life, um, with our money. And then from there we work together and it's not just like Mark punishing Lauren for overspending because then that makes me feel bad and makes me angry and builds resentment. So there's, there's improvements that both of you need to make. It's not just that the spender isn't, is spending too much money. The saver needs to learn from the spender in a little bit too, but they need to communicate properly to make it effective. Yeah. So it all comes down to communication. Mm -hmm. And I love how you start that process off with, um, the financial bucket list. Yep. And in the back of the book, Lauren even gives you a form that you and your spouse can fill out and you say, fill it out separately and then talk about it together and create this vision, which I love creating the vision for your life of what you want your money to do for you. And then realizing mm -hmm. that it can be better used for these big dreams we have and the things we want to achieve in our life for ourselves and our kids. And, you know, rather than buying these extra few things at Target, which is so easy to do, um, mm -hmm. we can we can save that money and use it for our future. Right. So exactly. I love that. I hope that everybody goes out to get the book. Um, so thank you, Lauren, for joining us today. I'm so excited to share this with everybody. And I know that your story and the book is going to help a lot of people in their journeys out of debt. And so the book name again is the recovering spender how to live a happy fulfilled debt-free life and so lauren where can people get a copy of the book yeah so it's um on amazon it's on barnes and noble you know it's in every bookstore that you can think of um and they can go to the recovering spender.com and they can watch actually i have one of the um, things i did for this for this book is i actually showed it in action i have a documentary, a three-part documentary that I filmed with a, a family out in Ohio. And so I would love if everybody could go watch it. You can see what, you can see what I teach in action by watching this family 
for three months and how I can transform their finances using the tips that I share in the book. So the recoverysender.com is where you can find the book and you can find me at laurengrootman.com. Great. Thank you so much, Lauren. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks again to Lauren for sharing her debt-free journey and her book with us. I hope that you enjoyed the interview. Her book, once again, is The Recovering Spender, How to Live a Happy, Fulfilled, Debt-Free Life. You can learn more about Lauren at laurengrootman.com and you can find out more about her book at therecoveringspender.com. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What did you learn about Lauren's story? Are you a spender in need of recovery or do you know someone who is? Please share in the comments below. And if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and I would be honored if you would share this with your friends. And I invite you to join me in our private Facebook group called Your Debt Freedom Family, where we've got an amazing group of people who are kicking debt to the curb so they can break free and live life on their terms. Just head over to ourdebtfreefamily.com slash your family to join. I'd love to see you there. Remember, keep moving forward toward your goals. You really can live the life you dream about. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. If you're ready to master your money and eliminate your debt stress forever, go to ourdebtfreefamily.com slash free 20 to schedule a free 20 minute power session with me. There's no obligation and this is a great way to learn more about how I can help you. 